Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right, so it's not a Trans Am, but we're getting closer with some virgin content. So today I just need to do some track prep on this thing. This is probably gonna be split up in quite a few videos, um, at least maybe two or three, because there's a lot I need to do. And a couple of these things could have potentially totaled the car and burnt it to the ground. So first of all, for the Trans Am here, I do have the fuel system like 95% on hand. I'm waiting on a couple of different things and you will see uh, the fuel system build video on this thing in like a video or two, probably not in the next video, uh, but the one after that. But as for the Camaro, I'm back here working on the heat exchanger tank because a while ago I took this thing out to Atlantic City for a show and on the way back, um, we smelled like a burning smell on the highway and uh, eventually realized the heat exchanger pump stopped working because the IATs were like going through the roof. And what basically happened is uh, right here where the connection is made to the tank. Now I didn't design this tank or make it or anything. I bought it, had a custom made and it came with these kind of like speaker fittings on it. But you can see the negative terminal air is pretty much melted and that caused uh, the wire to melt, the connection was broken and that caused pretty much everything not to work. And now I initially thought the pump was the problem, but I did pull it out and I bench test it and it's working fine. And after kind of just digging into this thing like five minutes ago, all these wire connections, they are just absolutely crusty and filled with corrosion. So I'm gonna have to try to cut this back as far as I can to get rid of that corrosion. And my plan is pretty much to take this little bulkhead here. This is pretty much the same thing I used for the, uh, the wiring harness on the Trans Am through the firewall. And I'm gonna drill a hole right through here. Just tighten that in there. That clamps down with a rubber seal so nothing's gonna leak. And I'm just gonna pass the wires right through the tank so I don't have to use a, a connection on the tank itself. And that should solve the issue. I also have a fuse because for some reason, I did not have this fused when I relocated and used this tank. So I initially had a pump, um, a little one mounted on the front bumper, like on the bumper brace. And when I uh, redid the wiring, moved the tank back here, I never fused it. But in addition to that, I do want to also pull this seal, uh, you know, the, the thread to the cap off because it does leak quite a bit from around here. And I don't think there's an actual gasket on that. So I'm just going to pull that off, put some silicone, pop the pump in, clamp it back down, fix the wiring and we should have our uh, heat exchanger back. Now, for anybody who's kind of new to this stuff, uh, the way this works, so those two hoses from that tank, they come in right through here, and they go into the lid of the supercharger, pretty much go in that way, that way, because it is a dual pass, and they come out, go to the heat exchanger, then one goes back, uh, back to the tank. And what's actually in here is just a big radiator that uh, the airflow, once it comes through the bottom of the supercharger, it's forced up through that radiator and then back down on each bank of the engine. Um, and that's what actually cools the air. But let's get to uh, get the wiring done. And then we are going to tackle the rear wheel studs because I pretty much twisted them all and could have potentially uh, broke them off and totaled the car when both back wheels flew off. But we'll get to that a little later on. <laughs> it's a little bit of ultra gray. RTV, that's all I got on hand. That should be tight enough. All right, so I guess I can get the pump back in. But I don't think... wires aren't gonna be long enough. All right, so I got some soldering done. I extended the two main pump wires and I used some uh, marine heat shrink tubing. So these are soldered. Uh, this heat shrink has like glue in it, so we shouldn't have any water intrusion or anything like that. And you can get that at Harbor Freight, I'll link it down below. But right now I'm just gonna pop the pump in and fish the, get a clamp on there first. But yeah, I'm gonna pop the pump in and fish the wires through our new bulkhead. And I did my best to get all the little metal shavings out of there. This is rust from the old clamp. Uh, we're on the pipe. She should. 
Oh yeah, lock in place. I think the way I did this last time, I just ran the wires, I zip tied them to the tube here. And then we'll go over and up and out the new bulkhead. Let's get this thing tightened down. All right, so the connections are made. All I gotta do is put a loom on it, put the covers back on, but let's go hit the switch for a second and just see if it makes noise. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that, no gasket. I wonder why this stupid thing leaks. Silicone sealants only. There's not even silicone on this. All right, well, there's your problem. All right, that should be all right. So I'm not sure if you can be able to tell this, but if you look, all the studs are kind of pointing in weird directions. This one seems to be kind of going this way a little bit. This bottom one is going that way a little bit. And uh, pretty much what happened, I put uh, slicks on this thing when I race it, and I launched it so hard last time, even though it wasn't even on the two-step, all of these twisted a little bit and the driver's side's even worse. I noticed it when I pulled the wheels off and I looked at it and I'm like, why, why do they all look like they're a little bit squiggly? And yeah, I'm lucky these things didn't snap. You can really see it here. Now, this one's relatively straight, but this one is really just kind of sticking over that way. And uh, yeah, to replace these, because these are just regular 7 16 studs, I got some longer half inch studs from Strange and these are, uh, thread in. There's actually two different spots on the hub. So when we take the rotor off, there should be a half inch thread right here that's going to allow these to go in and then we'll just spin these out. I don't know if the axle has to come out. So let's get the brakes off and I will take a closer look at this. If anybody's wondering, I have ground control weight jacks back here and this is a, um, a strange S60. Rear ends 373 gears. The shocks are Coney adjustables, which in another video, when we tackle a few other things, because I also want to move the, the intake out of the engine base, so do like a cold air on it, have it route into the fender. And you know what? The, I think the parking brake's still on. Oh yeah, it's still on, okay. we have right here this other section yeah that's the size threads are a little crusty but uh oh do they oh that might there's a hole for an abs sensor that i could probably get it through ah uh, it almost works but it's off all right so i just got to take the plate off here we got four of these I don't even need to like, I don't want to disrupt that seal. So that's it, we're dropped down. I can start spinning these guys out. And to pull the axle out, we'll just, uh, once that plate's off, because they're bolt-in, there's like a collar that's pressed right on here, right on the axle, that's like really, really tightly pressed onto there. And then the plate itself sits against that collar and that's what holds the axle in so it doesn't have C-clips. 
You can see how bent it is too when it turns. Now I'm a little too lazy to get a thread chaser, so I'm just gonna get some PB Blaster and we'll slowly kind of work that in. So this next part is going to be interesting because these new studs, I think they're three inch and the old ones were two inch. So for one thing, uh, the lug nuts aren't going to fit because, well, they're obviously larger. They're a half inch instead of seven sixteenths. But because they're longer, I'm pretty sure, I don't think I'm going to be able to run a I don't know if the ones I got are correct. Run a closed cap lug nut on here. Because for the track, for the drag setup, I did get some open ends. Because when they do uh, tech inspection, they need to see the engagement of the threads on the stud. But I prefer to have a, a closed lug. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Yeah. A closed nut which I don't think is going to happen. Here's what I picked up for the drag setup. You can see it's a uh, open nut, so you can see the thread engagement. And this should fit without a problem. I'm not sure how guys usually do it if you just could get a really tall nut. Or if I should have just ran a shorter stud. Because when I called up Strange and told him what I was doing, he said, this is what I need and that's the length I'm gonna need. I guess that doesn't look terrible. It's not as clean as the closed ones, but. I wanna try to get a nine out of it. I'm gonna have to run those for now. Alrighty, well, um, Ridiculous is probably a huge understatement. But for track purposes, they will do. Now, yeah, well, once I'm done with the track, I'm probably gonna end up swapping them out for um, half inch, probably half inch by two inch, just so I can keep the, uh, the shorter lugs on there because that looks so stupid. I mean, I don't know if I get a different wheel. Um, if there'll be more recess. I think with the drag setup, they're probably not gonna stick out as much. This is a really shallow wheel because I have uh, the fourth gen width rear end. There's really no dish to this. So there's not much meat of the rim itself uh, to kind of recess those in. And as long as I keep this rear end, I don't think I'm gonna be able to, to really change that offset much. I mean, I could take it out a little bit, but. For now, that's gonna have to do. Let me uh, spin it around and uh, we'll get the other side finished up. All right, so with the studs all done, let's uh, see if we could tackle this intake quick. So I got some more five inch pipe and a couple of elbows. And what I'm basically gonna do is take off this section here 
And then I want to make the hole in the battery tray bigger because I have a four inch hole in there from when I had the old intake on. I never made it bigger to fit this pipe through. So we'll pull this out, try to widen that hole. And then I'm going to see if I can kind of angle it down either partially in the fender or completely. It depends how far down this air filter is going to hang. All right, so first of all, I'm glad I didn't fill the, the tank up because these uh, heat exchanger hoses, they have to get moved. So this one in particular, uh, coming from the heat exchanger, we got to either get it over in this corner or relocate it somewhere else. I'm not going to have enough room to get that tube down there. Get these zip ties out of the way. So yeah, I'm gonna need a longer hose for that, but with that moved over, I got plenty of room to kind of widen this up. I'm probably just gonna cut this as a square because um, I think I used like a four inch hole saw when I did this. I don't have a five inch, even if I did, I'm not gonna be able to recut that anyway, unless I like weld uh, a plate or something in, in the middle of that for the drill bit. So I'm just gonna try to get in there with the, the little sawzall and just open that up so we get this filter down there. And I might just open it enough to kinda get the tip of it in there just to get some type of cool air uh, sucked up through this thing. Or if ground clearance lets me, I can also kind of, that's gonna be really low though. I'm definitely not gonna be driving this thing in the rain. Yeah, that's not going to fly. The, the tray is all the way down here. So we'll probably actually see that hanging under the fender unless they go with like a smaller filter. And after taking a closer look, it looks like the filter actually rubbed on the meth pump and there is a legit hole in it. So I am going to have to get a new filter anyway. Maybe I'll get one. It's a little shorter. I just want to restrict the airflow through this thing. Okay, oh, is it the squarest thing? Probably not, but I mean, you know, for what I use and what I had in the way, that didn't come out half bad. Uh, once I touch up the paint, get a little uh, rubber edge guard on there just to kind of put around the edge so nothing chafes on the filter or anything, clean it up. I think that's not gonna look too bad. And the best part, the whole reason why we're here, is now that guy. I'll fit in there. I'm probably not going to, you know, go all the way down with it. Probably something like that, maybe a little bit angled, just to get like 75% of the filter out of the engine bay. So it could stop sucking up that uh, heat that is kind of accumulating under here. Because uh, with the hood open on this thing, it runs so much cooler. Just the amount of heat coming off this engine that can't get out of this bay um, it's just ridiculous and the, the intake just sucking it all up. Eventually I have to do something with the hood, either swap it out or um, find some kind of vents that don't look, you know, cheap and disgusting and put them on here to try to get that heat out. Uh, the real test is going to be with the Trans Am. I want to see how that car is going to act because uh, the stock hood does have vents in it already. Yeah, make it like six inches. That is uh, sort of, kind of, a cold air intake, I guess. The problem is this rubber is so friggin' tall here. Even when the tube is like butt up against the filter, this is butt up against the filter, it's still pushing the filter down too much. So I cut a good amount of that back, maybe like an inch. Uh, but to get it, it's kind of angled in towards the wheel now. Just it's slightly that way. I want to kind of have it come straight down to make sure it's not gonna rub on the tire. But I mean, that that works. I could essentially just throw the clamps on right now. And uh, that's gonna suck air in from the fender. So I gotta get a filter. Um, I gotta put a different hose on, a, uh, a longer line to go from the heat exchanger to the supercharger. 
and then, you know, clamp everything down, get the new filter, see if I get some edge guard. But uh, this is pretty much how it's gonna end up. So I'll give you guys an update in the next video when we tackle the two-step stuff and the clutch switch and a few things like that. But for now, that is definitely um, an improvement. We got the wheel studs done. We got the, the tank working. Unfortunately, I can't take this thing out. I'd love to go out and rip it for you guys, but uh, the weather, the, the roads are just covered in like salt, uh, road salt, and it's kind of like wet. So it's, that's, it, it's all liquefied, it's spraying everywhere. I really wanna take this car out in that. Uh, but hopefully next video will warm up enough where once we get the two-step going, we could go out for a little rip in it. So I really couldn't think of a better way to get back into third-gen content uh, other than bringing the Camaro back on the channel, getting some much-needed track prep dumped to it, which also reminds me I can't really think of a better way to launch a new website other than using Squarespace's beautiful and powerful platform to create that website. With Squarespace's all-in-one, easy-to-use platform, you're going to be able to connect to your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content manage members and email communications and leverage audience insights all in one place. In addition to that, you can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system. It's gonna support comments, replies, and of course, likes. You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts as well. On top of that, you can also extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These are new third-party tools that can help you manage inventory, promote products, and streamline bookkeeping. They're basically links to other sites that are gonna allow you to utilize their tools on your Squarespace site. Now on top of that, you can also display posts from your social media profiles on your website. So automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share them as well. You're gonna to wanna to go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash LSXMAT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, I just wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you in the next one.